Are we live? We're live. All right. Hey everyone, this is uh, Michael Sky right here. <laughs> I'm Hans Kamei. <laughs> well, it's actually the reverse for those of you who don't notice that well. But uh, just wanted to share something. We, Hans and I do this every morning for the last month. We're waking up really early in the morning, doing our morning rituals, going to the, uh, the ocean, diving in the cold water. And then we come back and we, we talk about our, our brothers back home and around the world who are facing many challenges. And uh, we talking about how we can reach them, who we can be for them. And uh, this morning, for those of you who don't know, I, I, uh, my life's work that has consumed me for decades is all about honor. And, uh, and, and a lot of it relates to relationship conflict. Um, but I was upstairs coming down for my morning ritual this morning. Uh, I saw Hans down here. He was on his, so Hans, you're on your social media. And I'm imagining he's on Instagram and stuff like this. And he's not like focused. He's not like focused on the ritual and like serious, you know. And I, and I noticed I was judging him. I was like, what a, you know, like non-committed, whatever. And uh, then I chuckled to myself as I, I remembered my work and I thought, you know, what is he standing for? And then, and then it was obvious, you know, he's standing for having a beautiful morning. And this is 100% in line with the rituals that you and I created. The intention is to have rituals so beautiful that you, they call you out of bed, they call you forward. So like you're 100% in alignment with everything that we're creating. And I'm up there judging you, right? Yes, between 7.15 and 7.30, as I make my breakfast and sit, come and sit outside here, it's the first time that I, uh, that I check messages and uh, get up at 5.55 and go to the sea, do a wake up ritual, work out, come back, clean up, do all that and that's when I check it and uh, yeah it, it's really part of the routine in a way you know because I just check it I don't reply I want to see what's, uh, what's you don't happening. have to explain yourself <laughs> no I'm saying it's uh -huh. part of it and why it brings me alive uh, you yes. know I look forward to it and uh, yeah it's part well, of I wanna, it well I want to I want to talk uh, about people because you know Hans and I are here at the Brazilian beach and you know one solution you know for guys watching uh, if you want to deal with uh, maybe a girlfriend or wife who is uh, nagging you a lot during these corona times, one solution would be they could come join us here in uh, the beach house on the coast of Brazil. But if that's not an <laughs> option for you, if that's not an option for you, how do you survive? And uh, obviously it's not just uh, men dealing with their woman judging them. There's also the man judging his woman and uh, the woman being judged by her man and uh, the man being judged by his woman. So there's, there's many aspects to a which we can get in tension, trouble here. A lot of tension, especially now, I hear it from people, you know, the cabin fever is raising, is, is high. People are in the same space for a long time and uh, it's very intense, you know? And so all, all of this comes up even stronger. Clint, welcome Clint. So yeah, maybe Clint is one of those guys. Clint, we're talking about, uh, how to deal with your, your nagging woman while you are uh, locked down in Corona. <laughs> so let's... Uh, this, is more, this is for everyone. Yes, it know? is for everyone. <laughs> I mean, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm just bringing it to my brother here. So <laughs> this is for everyone. It's not just for guys being nagged by their women. Because I, 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 I want you to explain it because what I learned after I, I met you is this. I, I see three, three ways of listening to the other more deeper ways of listening and for years I thought that uh, the greatest thing someone can do in their relationship to to listen deeper is to suspend one's their judgment so we go through this world and we have constant judgments and assumptions and it's okay you know this is how we know things you know you you you, you assume something you presuppose you judge something and then you prove them wrong and you change your mind. So it's okay. Buddha said that love is the, the, the absence of judgment. 
And for years I said, no, it's the, the suspension of judgment. Because we go through the world with judgment and then we try to suspend them. That's step one. Choosing, choosing not to judge or to hold Choo back your judgments. Hold back judgment. Is, is love. Is love. And then I thought, then I shifted into, oh, love is, is actually empathy. It's the willingness to understand, not only to not judge, but to understand, to walk the, the shoes of the other person. And so for years I, I, I thought empathy is really the, the ultimate. And, uh, and with empathy in a relationship, anything is possible. Without it, it's all lost. And, uh, and then I realized, and this is when I met you in 2018, that there's an even a higher or a more an ultimate stage of love and to me it's it's honoring the other in their world it's not only not not judging it's not only having empathy the willingness to understand but it's to be able to walk their shoes see the mountain they've been facing and honor the choices they made and what they've been standing for and uh, and it's so powerful and uh, I think it yeah it would be great for you to explain how you can do that in a situation when you're living with your husband or your wife and it's and tensions are high and judgments yes. are flying back and forth yes yeah well there's i mean for me there's a whole like martial art dealing with the inner conflict and interpersonal conflict around honor that i've developed mm -hmm. uh so it's it's uh it can go pretty deep uh and it depends on the situation but a very, very simple version of it is, for example, noticing when you are judging. Um, it, you know, so when I'm up there judging you this morning, Hans, I could have come down, not said anything to you, but just had this way of looking down on you. And you might have felt that. And you, you can, people can tell when they're being judged. Right. So you might have... Uh, form some judgment about me just in, in coping with that, right? And then I'm feeling even, not, not only am I judging you, I'm feeling judged by you. So I'm like even more judging you now. This guy and who is wrong is this, also judging me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is how the wall is built. Right. And then before you know it, uh, I'm calling my lawyer, you're calling lawyer, your lawyer, you know. But um, the, the prisoner of her own judgment. I am the prisoner yes. of my judgment. Yes, yes. So, um, a lot of times what we try to do is we try to work something out with the other person, you know, or we try to teach someone how mm. you're, they're wrong, right? So I could say, <laughs> Hans, you know, you're judging me, <laughs> whatever. But the more powerful thing is to, is to first bring down your own walls of judgment and find honor in yourself Find what I, I call a place to stand, but find a place to stand where you feel honor inside of you and you are standing for not just yourself, but for the other also. Um, and so... Um, and that's in... is Because there's a risk here to, to mix it up. That's by... A place to stand, is that in seeing what those people, what the other has been standing for or no. is standing for? No. Oh. So... Uh, it's, it's, so I'm just thinking of people watching who may have no introduction to the honor window. Yes. Right. So, um, so the first step I did here was I caught myself judging and I said, what is he standing for? And that was enough to dispel the judgment. Right. And that was a little, that was a small thing. It wasn't like I've got these heavy judgments about you, right? right? Whereas people in quarantine, <laughs> living with each other all day long, judging and being judged and trying to cope with that uh, can be a lot more difficult thing. But a next step in seeing what you're standing for is saying, now who am I for you? Even in the face of what I feel, even in the face of your judgments of me, which you weren't judging me at the time, as far as I know, who, who in this moment do I stand for being for you right. in the face of it all? That gives me a place of honor. So now, not only am I um, not judging you, not only am I empathizing with you, but, um, and not only have I honored you inside of myself, 
but I found a place to stand where I feel honor in standing yes. for you. That, but I, because people are new. I think this is very advanced. Yes. The, but this, it's brilliant because it shows, and I'm, it shows how you could save your rela relationships by yourself. But I'm, but I'm interested in the first step. When you're standing there and judging, you catch, what did you say? You catch yourself and then you say, what is he standing for? Yes. What does that mean? Hey, Comden, my Maasai warrior brother from Kenya and Tom from, uh, Th Tom, you're in Thailand, right? Hope you guys are staying alive. Uh, what does it mean to catch myself? No, you say you, you catch yourself judging. Yes, yes. And then you say, what is he standing for? Yes, yeah, so I'm judging you and I say, what is he standing for? And as soon as I kind of enter your world and realize what you're standing for, it immediately dispels the judgment. Right. Not to say that that always works, but that's, but for me, with that little small judgment, that was enough. But what do you mean by saying, what is he standing for? So. Is that it? Like. Yes. What does he represent? What, what is important to him? What is his virtue? Yeah. What, what is it? Yeah, it's a great question. So, a, what value are you standing for? Mm. What person are you standing for? Um, who are you standing for being? Mm -hmm. Those are the three areas that I'll look to, to see what someone is standing for. Mm -hmm. So maybe we use an example that's a little bit more emotional, a little, a little bit more difficult uh, for people. Let's say... For the guys watching, I think it's mostly guys on both of our live streams here. Let's say your woman comes to you and she is, Hans, we could even use this example that, that you brought up recently. You, uh, Hans works with men in relationship with women. So, you know, uh, a guy's girlfriend comes to him and she's upset that he's not committing. Right. And she's... And a lot of times to find, let's say... Well, she's trying to push him to uh, commit. Yeah, a lot of times people don't confront us until they, have, until they find anger, right? And then anger gives them the power to confront. And usually to find anger, they've already arrived at judgment. Right. Right? He's wrong. He's taken months out of my life and he's not moving forward with he's this. He's taking the best time of my life. I'm going to confront that motherfucker. Right. Right? So then she finds the power. Now she has the power to come and confront you. And then she brings this and you're like just watching TV or something You're like, whoa, whoa, where is this coming from? You right. know, and the natural instinct is to, because you feel attacked to protect yourself. This crazy B, this whatever, you know, so you bring the judgment back. Now, that's an that's a natural defense mechanism. Right. Right. And then the and, judgment of, of And him. then you can engage in that in different ways. You can fight with her. You can run from her. You can block her out. You can try to be rational, but while internally still right. judging her, right? Which all of those solutions are not going to work very well as far as uh, navigating this uh, conflict with her. So... Um, it, the the honor based approach would include, um, you, you could do it one of two ways. You could start with, who am I for her, even in the face of what I feel right now. Well, what, what I, what, when when you're doing this, when you when you map this on, yes. what would happen is this. So I'm speaking for the guys. The the girl comes and says, oh, "We've seen each other. Why are you not committing?" You know, and he's judging her as like. Where is this coming from? Is she crazy? Do women, women are crazy? They want to push me. What 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 he could do is try to understand where she's coming from, and if he would see, probably first because you're feeling attacked in that moment. So you, so so you might have fear, you might have stress, you might have anger, you might have a lot of reaction potentially, right? Um, and so first. I would start with remembering who she is for you, who you are for her. Now this is, this is on a Facebook Live for people who don't have any background. Christina Nashipe, hey guys. Nashipe from Kenya. Here's <laughs> what I see. Christina from Australia. Here's what I see. The same, the same thing. We're Map talking about relationship conflict. 
in the times of being quarantined with someone else during the coronavirus. Like mapping on there, what would be very helpful in that situation, if he could catch himself judging her, is she crazy for wanting a commitment, whatever, but if he could step away from that judgment and see where she's coming from and honor her, in the way you just said, maybe she's like, she's been wanting this for a while and she's been building the anger and, and not wanting to share, or being afraid of sharing, and now she's sharing that with me. That alone, if you if you would see that process, you know, that would help. That would help for someone, a man, not to judge that woman that now comes to him. You know, that would help because he could see where she's coming from, and he can honor her for it, and he can honor her for what she's trying to get at. Yeah, I, what I was gonna say is even more powerful though is if you have a practice of. If your if your relationship is built on honor, mm -hmm. and you can instantly remember, right in the face of feeling this, who I am for her, that's the most powerful thing. But, <laughs> but uh, aside from that, someone just listening to this for the first time, you know, what you could do is contemplate. Um, yeah, what is she facing and feeling? Right, right. And what is she standing for? So um, she might be feeling scared because of the corona stuff. And she might be seeing that you're just on the news the whole day and feeling like and not, not knowing if you're important to her. She might be feeling lonely like all these things. Um, she might be afraid that she's wasting a lot of time and... What is she standing for? She's standing for the chance at being your woman. Right. Being with you forever. So I'm, I'm making this stuff up, right? With a hypothetical scenario. But, um, and if you start there, instead of reacting to the judgment, right. if you start with honor and you can presence honor, then you can transform everything. But if you try to deal, what a lot of guys will do, hey, Christina, what a, what a lot of guys will do is they will react to the things that she's saying, the words that she's saying. But what, and what he's really reacting to is his own, well, it's his own experience of her being judged by her. Right. He's feeling attacked, and then he's coming back, responding to her words. And that's never, that's never a powerful option. That's like, uh, yeah. So very practical, like a very, I, I want to say something about me that is when I discovered I was very judgmental of, of people who are judgmental. But uh, a very practical good step is, is to see your own judgment. When you're emotional, you know, notice that, see your own judgment, suspend them and try to, try to honor the other for what they're standing for. Try to see, uh, try to see what, are they, what are they standing for? What are they trying to attain? What, are they, what is the mountain they're facing? What are, what are they going through? And it will, it will make discussions or it will diffuse the tension uh, yes. instantly. Let, let, let's switch this around, right? Let's say the, the woman in this case She's feeling maybe abandoned. She's feeling whatever she's feeling. Mm -hmm. She goes into judgment of him and she's going to bring this to him now. Right. Right. Um, oh, man, it's so powerful if she can come to him with honor instead of the judgment. You know, this whole thing that men, you know, men complain that women, their woman nags them all the time. And... It's like he's feeling blindsided by it. Like you've already decided he's wrong for doing what he's doing. And now you're going to complain about it to him. Um, and then he probably doesn't do it <laughs> with the nagging, mm -hmm. right? Or he comes back at you and judges you. If she can approach him with honor, it's such a, like a revolutionary different approach, which can transform the relationship. Mm -hmm. Um but, so, but Hans, I feel like we're being very conceptual here, right? No, like, I don't think. Uh, well, depending on, on where we go with this, but I think it's very practical. How could the woman who comes with that uh, 
like the, the situation you described, he's, he's watching TV. You know what we should do? We should do a webinar and just take people through their real conflict right. with someone else and draw out an honor window. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Christina? <laughs> Who else is watching? <clears throat> yes, but I think it's very powerful. I think it's a very powerful and very practical thing that, that, that I see that is very powerful for me. When I feel very strong and emotional about someone and I bring, I come with that emotion, I usually have judgment, you know, and I got to step back, catch myself, see my judgment of it, say, okay, I'm suspending it. Now, try to walk there, there. Uh, well, but what's interesting is a lot of people can think like, okay, well, I do understand him. Right. Well, I know like what he's doing or um, I, 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 yeah, I, you know, I have compassion, whatever. But the thing that distinguishes like, are you in a place of honor mm -hmm. inside of yourself and are you honoring the other person? And mostly we don't know how to do this. Right. This is the challenge. But this is where the miracles are possible. Mm -hmm inside of how you see the world, how you see him, how you see the relationship, and uh, what's, what you can make happen with the other. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not enough to say, oh, well, I, yeah, I honor him. No. Is he feeling honored by you? Am I feeling honored? Are you feeling honored inside of yourself when you come to him? This is the, this is the distinction. It's not a concept. Um, you know, you and I talked the other day about the difference of like knowing and being awake. Mm -hmm. This is a big trap for human beings. We think that knowing is enough. Knowing is never enough. It's not enough to know someone, to think that you understand them. And, and in, in this conflict situation, it's, it's not enough to think that you understand the other person. It's do they feel understood. It's not enough to, to, to say or think or know that I honor them. It's do they feel honored by you? Do they feel honored in this moment mm -hmm. when you come to them? Do you feel honored inside of yourself? That's the, that's the thing that really makes the difference. Mm -hmm. That's it, yeah. That's, oh, Eliza. That's hard work. I last saw you in Thailand, Eliza. I don't know if she's, you probably never experienced my honor work. That's what we're talking about now. Well, let's announce, uh, let's announce that one of these days we'll go through it. And explain, yes. We'll get a whiteboard. Yes. We'll explain it that way. Everyone can diagram their own conflict with a primary relationship, a primary person in their life, and we can have an amazing breakthrough. It's, uh, yeah, it's hard times. I, I hear a lot of people who are discovering, you know, a lot about their relationships. Um, I always said one, one day of tr when it comes to getting to know the other one day of travel equals two weeks of living together equals three months of dating and a lot of people are living intensely together now so it's a great opportunity to get you know, to as, know each other very well <laughs> as, as we wonder how many people are going to die of coronavirus I wonder how many relationships will die because of the judgment virus right, <laughs> right. <laughs> being locked in together uh, yeah I propose that we'll do that one of these days and uh, talk more about it. Yeah, let's do it within the week. Okay. That's my promise. What All time right. is it, Hans? So, Hans and I, we do this, we have these conversations every morning at the same time, and just yesterday we said, let's start doing them live. So, uh, yesterday was our first one. If you have any questions, second. you could put them underneath, uh, and then maybe we deal with them. If you ever wanna come on the on these talks, maybe we can deal with a specific situation. So uh, we'll do this again tomorrow at the same time. Christina is saying, experiencing this in our household right now with parents in isolation forced to live with us. Yes. Christina, I've... give us an example of what, uh, what's going on there. What you're facing. Tom says, brothers to a different mother. <laughs> Tom, we used to play, you know, pickleball? We played pickleball in uh, Thailand. Mm. Tom was, uh, he was an ace at pickleball. It's now becoming, the pickleball virus is now spreading throughout the world. It's becoming a pretty hot sport these days. It's like a, it's like a version of tennis, but uh, on a smaller court and you can make your own court. And so it's really, 
Mm. You can kind of do it anywhere. Like, if you if you got like a parking lot or some cement, you can just start playing pickleball. Tom, you have a a uh, lady friend there in Thailand or many? Christina says huge triggers. All right, I'm gonna say goodbye to uh, my people here on my Facebook Live, and uh, if you want to continue watching this. Uh, you can also go to Michael's. I'll see you guys yes. tomorrow. We need to announce an honor window.